Chapter 46 Hair Like Hers Not much had changed by September, except that Annika had started coming out of her room. Her stomach wasn't a round reminder either, but that might have been because she only ever picked at her food. The strangest thing was that nobody said Drumlin's name anymore, not Pop or Luca, and Annika didn't say much of anything anymore. It was only when Sam and I were talking in private that we mentioned the littlest Ridge, his brother. It reminded me of being Winnie, mum's name for me that nobody else used, and how I'd started missing that part of myself, until recently when I'd given it to Nora. You have hair just like your mother's, V said one day in late September when I went to her shop for a haircut. She gathered my hair and twirled it atop my head, the way my mum had worn it on her wedding day. Really? I said a little shyly. I saw her nod her head in the mirror. She told me a couple of days ago to stop by after school because I needed to get my fringe out of my eyes. She bent down and rested her chin on my shoulders, looking at me in the mirror. Just like Maria, she said, more and more each day. I love when V cut my hair. She'd been doing it all my life. And my favourite part was at the end, when it was all straight and brushed, and she'd run her hands through it like it was water. What do you think, boys? she asked, and spun me round in the chair to face Sam and Jed, who were waiting on the couch for their turn. Sam barely looked up from his Game Boy, but Jed's cheeks went red and he mumbled that it looked alright. V signalled at him, so Jed jumped up to sweep my hair away, ducking his head until his cheeks went back to normal. Then Sam got his hair trimmed so we could see his eyes again, and V kept scrunching his curls until they bounced. I love this hair. Sam the man, she said. Jed came back and sat next to me on the couch. He nudged my shoulder and offered me a go at the Game Boy, but I shook my head. I wish more of the Haven kids would let me play with their hair, V said. So many of them have hair just like yours, Sam, so lovely and curly. And then she snipped one or two of Sam's head, pulled them straight and let them bounce back up. Me is volunteering at the Haven, Jed said. She's been going there with other hairdressers to give free cuts. I sat up a little straighter. Since when? V caught my eye in the mirror, and she turned Sam this way, and that, looking at his head from different angles. Just the last couple of weeks. Can I come next time you go out? I asked, and V's face changed as she shook her head. I don't think that's a good idea, she said. It's very bad there now. What do you mean? Sam caught V's eye in the mirror, and she busied herself choosing a different pair of scissors. Jed piped up. You didn't say anything, me? I thought you liked cutting kids' ha hair. V came back to Sam and ran her fingers through his hair. I'll do it for these poor kids, she said, sighing. But it's very bad there now. The little girls, they want their hair all cut off. What? Why? I snapped. Sometimes they come to us, or their mummies bring them. V placed her hands on Sam's shoulders, and we watched her in the mirror, but she seemed far away. They ask us to cut their hair short so the girls look like boys, for when they go home. Why would they do that? Jed asked. To protect them, of course. V turned around and frowned at Jed, then reached for his hand and squeezed it. War ends, but bad things still happen. You kids are so lucky living here. You've never had to know. Then she shook her head again and let go of Jed's hand. Now, Van, help me clean up. But V's words had made the hair on the back of my neck stand up.